I'm still mm -hmm. very honored to meet you. It's oh, really, well, really great uh, to have you here in the parliament. And thank you so much for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, nice, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, so in your films, you very often focus on the working class and their everyday struggle. And um, yeah, I was wondering, why is this topic so dear to you? Um, well, if there is to be change, it will come from the working class. It won't come because they, those who control capital decide to give up power. It will only come when those who, who, um, who, who, who live their lives uh, exploited, um, struggling to survive, um, and, and those in, who think they're middle class but actually live by selling their labor. It will only, change will come from them. It won't. It won't come from the rich and powerful. Mm. So, so in a way, they are the most important people. They they are the least regarded, but they are the most important people historically. If we are to change things, it has to come from the working class. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's mm. very right. I think that's you know you see the change coming from the people that are at the mm. moment at least that are not the ones mm. that are the most hurt usually in society. I mean, if you look mm. at, for example, the climate movement. Uh, mm -hmm. which, uh, which I've been a part of for many years. Um, it's now the young kids. I mean, young mm -hmm. kids are usually not the people that people are listening to, and now they're actually bringing change in the world. Yes, so yes. That's, uh, yes. that's very interesting. Well, and well, I think that those who, who control business, they, they have a different imperative, yeah. and, and they have to, because their, their objective is to increase their profits year by year, which means increasing their market share. And that has to take be more important for them than than climate change because yeah. if they don't increase their profits in the next 12 months the investment will go to someone else yeah. so there's a isn't it there's a built-in demand exactly that prior, that prioritizes profit o over 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 everything else environmental yeah. issues labor issues international um, law yeah it, uh, over everything, and th that's why it is such a destructive economic system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's actually what we're we're trying to fight here in the parliament is is trying to make sure mm -hmm. that you know people and and the environment are more important than the profits of big corporations. Yes. It's basically what we stand for. Um, can I ask you something about that? Yes, of course. <laughs> well, the founding document of the European Union says it's based on the free market. Yes. Well, if you are to challenge the priority of profit, how can that coexist with the free market? Well, it also says, which I find very inspiring, that the free market has to be there for the people. And it has to be better for the people, what the internal market does. And I think that the way that we have designed the internal market is not a social way. It's not a way that puts people forward, but it could have been. We could have made it, made it a really social market. We could have made sure mm -hmm. that um, we, we made boundaries to big corporations to make profits, to make sure that they pay their taxes. And we could have made sure that um, we uh, actually made sure that all the people will have the social mm -hmm. rights that they deserve within this internal market. And I think that's um, something that uh, is, has been going wrong in the way we have built the market, mm -hmm. but it's not the market itself. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one thing that you see now that is changing. You see that the narrative around this is changing. Mm -hmm. We have been trying to take away all the, the boundaries for big corporations to just yeah, yeah, make yeah. profits. And actually you see now that people are saying, okay, this is actually not what we want. And this is not the way mm -hmm. forward because yeah, this be yeah. has become a race to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you see that there's a change coming, mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. see that we have to do things differently and that we are now trying to go for you know, a you race see, to that, the top. That's, I, think that's a, I think that's there's a problem there. Because I think the the inevitable nature of a market is to break those rules. That's the imperative. Because they will find ways around it. And the gig economy is a classic example. We are in the EU with apparent labor uh, rules to protect the rights of labor. Yet in the gig economy, with so-called self-employment, all those rights go. So you lose the eight-hour day. You lose the minimum wage. Because the the worker is apparently an entrepreneur, of course he isn't. Yeah. It's a fiction, yeah. but it's a way of employers exploiting workers more. So my position would, I think, be slightly different to yours, Kim, <laughs> which is that the social market is a contradiction in terms. A market is a market. A market is is priorities are profit, 
market share, shareholder value. You can't, you can't, the lion will not lie down with the lamb. Mm. You cannot, to my mind, and this is where we comradely emphasize different things. To my mind, the market is essentially about exploitation. And, I think and, if we, and you, if can't, we, you can't chain it. I think the capitalist mm. market is about exploitation. No <laughs> and I think that um, if we make sure that companies actually divide the profit that they're making and we divide it equally, mm. we can actually move forward together. But you're talking about common ownership then, cooperatives, collectives. For not, example, not, not, yeah. not, not privately owned. Yes. Well, for mm. example, you know, mm. like I think that uh, democracy within corporations mm. is something that we have to fight for more mm. and to make sure that people... Uh, Actually, go forward. Anyway, um, big subject. Yeah, I had another uh, question. Mm. Um, so, in I Daniel Blake, you showed how social welfare systems are cracking people instead mm -hmm. of helping them out. And I remember I felt so angry after seeing this movie, but like mm. I cursed as soon as the credits started mm -hmm. rolling, and I think that never happened to me before. <laughs> um, and um, and it makes also it made me really want to do something about this. Um, and um, is that actually the reaction you try to provoke? Do you try to make people want to fight to change society? Um, well, I think the first thing is is to to I hope to 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 recognise that this is this is true, and and to enjoy the story of these people and to enjoy meeting them and to be feel their their view of the world is slightly expanded and and that. That moment by moment, it's engaging. You know, mm -hmm. you care about the people. Yeah. You laugh with them if you, or smile with them, or you, you weep with them. Yeah. Um, and 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 have a view into the characters' dilemmas and choices and limp and expectations. And then out of that, then there are wider questions, social questions. Um, and yes, if it's if there's an intolerable situation. And I think there are there are intolerable situations in in that story and and in this one. Then why are they there? In whose interest do they exist? And and how do we challenge them? How do we change them? And what are our strengths? You know. Um, so yes, all all those questions really. But I think I, I think if it, if it were reduced to a to a, a program, you know, or a, a kind of Political set of it would be it, that would be propaganda, and that, that's not a very good film. I mean, this one's about families as well. It's about yes, relationships definitely. between fathers and sons, and how how different parents play different roles within families. So you you, you hope it's about the human condition, not not with, with political implications. Yes, mm. yes, I see that. Mm. Um, in, um, in Sorry We Missed You, you're shining the light on the platform economy mm. and uh, yeah, the devastating effect it has on people and, and their families. Um, mm. And we see that this platform work is really on the rise in Europe and that workers mm. lack uh, basic social protection. Um, mm. Mm. Why did you pick this specific subject for your film? Um, well, when we were doing the previous film, which was about, as you say, about people getting um, small amounts of money from the state to survive, the government, our government, the British government, was using this um, as a as a deterrent for people to say not not to claim benefits. Mm -hmm. They wanted to cut the benefits they were paying, so they they made it as difficult as possible and punishing, and they they used hunger as a weapon. And so we've got a massive increase in what we call food banks, which is where charities give food to people who would otherwise starve. We did some research into those when we were making our Daniel Blake, and we found, of course, a lot of the people going to food banks are working. They're working, yeah. and the working poor is now is a is a big feature in our societies. So we thought, well, maybe that's the next story, and it is about it is about the working poor, yeah. the danger of debt, the fear of debt, the problems of finding somewhere to live. And also the destruction of of family life, mm -hmm. because if you've got two parents and they're both working on either zero hours contracts, no job security, poverty wages, they're working 10, 12 hours a day, they don't see their children. you know. And the mother is, I think many women will, will, in, will understand this. They're trying to tell their kids, you know, do your home on the phone. 
the, the food is in the fridge, put it in the oven, don't spend all night on your computer, do your homework, be in bed when I get home, you know, all, all the things. And the woman is torn and torn, you know, yeah. trying to do her work and trying to bring up a family. Yeah. And um, do, can we then conclude that um, in general our governments are neglecting their task to protect people and uh, ensure the well-being of its citizens? The government see their task as protecting business. They don't see their task as protecting the people. The, the right-wing governments, our government, we've had a conservative government for 10 years, yeah. and Blair before him, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, their prime duty was to make business successful. The, the secondary was taking care of people, secondary. And I think we, we don't judge politics correctly if we think they get elected in order to protect people. They don't. They believe in a system in which production for private profit is progressive, therefore that has to work. And if the bosses make enough money, you can get some taxation to look after everyone else and the casualties of their system. But very ironic, when Tony Blair was elected first, in, when was it, 1994, I think, or 97, I can't remember which, he had a slow, 94, 94? God, that's my memory. It, he had a slogan and it went, it was Labour means business. You know, and, and in English that means, it can mean you rolling your sleeve up, you mean business. But actually he meant business. Yeah. He meant big business. <coughs> yeah. and, and I think we, because he ran on, on a left ticket, you know, the Labour Party, a left ticket, people were fooled into thinking this is a man whose government will protect people. He did the opposite. And it, it, it opened them to exploitation. And of course, the Tories are only too pleased to do the same. Yeah. So I, I, think it's, I think it's a matter of political analysis. They are there to protect business. That's their function. Yeah. So what would you expect from a politician like me to, to actually change um, the world? Well... <laughs> it's difficult. I, I, I expect a lot. Well, bring <laughs> and, it. And, well, I think, I think first of all, and I'm sure you've done. And this would sound patronising, and it doesn't mean to be, but I'm sure it doesn't apply to you. But I think the first thing is read history, read history to to every everyone who, who purports to be on the left. You've got to read history. You know, you've got to know the the the, the irreconcilability of two classes in society. It's based on that conflict. And then you've got to plan how you take power. And you, you, can, you, you, you won't, yes, you can make little changes. You can adapt things, you can put in regulations. But in the end, it's like water running downhill. You put up a dam, which is a, a, reg, a regulation, the water will find its way around it, you know, which, yeah. is, which is capital. So I think, to me, I think if you start by reading history, you work out how, how, you, how you take power. And then, then that's the that's the strategic aim you pursue. And then you reorganise society on the basis of common ownership, common interests, and to make the make work and the planet and production work for people. And I think that that could seem a long way off, you know, back in the nineteenth century, in the twentieth century. But you know better than I do. Now there is an imperative yes. because we're on a, like we've never had before. There's an end game. And the end game is the destruction of the planet. And so we don't have time to mess around, you know, with social democracy, a little regulation here, regulation there. You've got to, get, you've got to go for the big one. You've got to take yeah. power. Well, I am very happy to tell you that there are many, many young people now in this parliament, like me, that are really ready to fight for our future and for the mm -hmm. future of future mm -hmm. generations. Right. And um, yeah, we're going to try Good. our best and to make sure that both the social components of the European Union and the planet in general. Good. Be, uh, Are you alongside the workers in France fighting Macron? Of course. You've got to be there. I mean, ev everybody, if they're, not, if they're not alongside them, they're not on the left. Yes, of course. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having this okay. interview. Okay, and, um, thanks a lot. Yeah. Good, nice to meet you. Yes, mm -hmm. same.